Hi everyone, uh, thanks for coming along. I know try and keep your attention now after two presentations or two workshops already, it's going to be tough, so hopefully we're going to have a good bit of interactive stuff today. Uh, my name is Erin and I'm going to do this presentation or workshop on feedback. Um, so as coaches, how it's important to actually give your athletes feedback and we're just going to discuss kind of as a group at different stages about different ways, different methods, different, at, at your understanding of it, like in your context and your sport. So we're going to try and keep it specific, but quite general so that everybody can get involved. Um, so just a brief introduction, um, I live at home with my family, um, I am a player with Ulster University Elks, I coach in the Celtic Basketball Club in Kildare and I'm a master's student in Ulster University. So just a little brief in, um, introduction and a definition on what feedback actually is. So plain and simple, it's information about a reaction to a product or possibly a performance that maybe an athlete has, has given and it's to be used for a basis of improvement. So feedback and communication in general is an extremely important part of the coaching process. So we talk about the number of different aspects that can be used but however our goal as coaches is to try and improve our athletes or our team um, so that they can become high performing or that we create this kind of enjoyment and task mastery environment. And that a lot of it comes down to you being able to understand as a coach when to give feedback or you know different individual aspects of it. So we'll discuss kind of the nitty gritty and the ins and outs of it a little bit later on in the workshop. And um, it can be divided into intrinsic and extrinsic. So both are actually a crucial part of feedback and the and the components of that. So intrinsically is actually an information that you might receive as an individual from yourself. So like you kind of just for example as a basketball player. If I shoot the ball and it's off a little bit or I've missed, I'll be able to give myself feedback internally as to how to perform that skill maybe a little bit better the next time. Um, same as if I score, I might say, okay, well, that was the right way to do things. And it can be specific to anybody's individual sport. Um, however, for maybe a youth athlete or somebody that may not be deemed like an expert or that might, may not have been playing so long, they might not understand how to give themselves feedback yet. You know they might need that extra bit of kind of reassurance or information from an external source and that brings us into extrinsic feedback so this is the information that you might receive from a coach from possibly a video analyst so we'll discuss a little bit later as well about how important video can actually be in your context in your sport in your practice in a game and um, but it's also a from a teammate so like it, it's about trying to create this environment as a coach that it's quite safe for maybe peers to give each other feedback in situations and that it's not going to be perceived negatively. So just to actually kind of further discuss that, as a coach we're trying to create this environment that um, you're setting your athletes up in such a situation that they can actually have this learning experience that they're receiving feedback all the time without them maybe even realising it. So you might be setting creating drills in certain aspects where you know that you're setting your athletes up to actually succeed so they're learning from that as they're going that they understand that that's the right way to do things or you might be challenging them and put them in a situation where it's a little bit trickier and they might actually fail and then it's about how we can get that then to progress going forward and it's all about this intrinsic kind of feedback so we're just going to see a few pictures um, of different sports and different ways of giving feedback so you can see it can be to a team and it can be through video. This here in the middle is actually a teammate of this left Steph Curry there, number 30 for the Gold State Warriors, and that's his teammate Andre Godala. So he's actually obviously not fit out to play that particular game, but it's obviously an environment in which he can speak to his teammate in a safe way that he might actually help him. And we see over here on the left, it might not be quite constructive, but you know, this is a way you might see this often or not, like in your environment, you know, whether it's a method that you might adapt yourself. We can discuss that a little bit later as to, you know, we talked about maybe body language earlier on, and um, this doesn't seem like to the outside looking in that that would be quite effective. However, we'll actually talk about that and what, what, I'll, what I want to actually hear your thoughts about like different ways and, you know, what might have worked for you when you were an athlete from your coach and how did you bring that forward to your team and you know just, just different ways of doing things. Um, so our first task I want you to do, you can do it in groups, you can do it in, you know, by yourself. Um, I just want you to write down two things on the top of your page. So the first one is importance of feedback and the second one is methods. And from your understanding I want you to just jot down a couple of things that you think like why feedback is important in sport and different ways and just to the best of your knowledge. 
I'm also going to put some flip chart paper out on the floor um, so when you're finished you can just write them down and we can compare them and create a bit of a discussion on that. I'll put up a list then after we can kind of compare and I'm sure you'll have extras. with the person next to you and then see if you can kind of create a bit of a list. Once you've had a bit of a discussion there, don't be afraid to get up on your feet now and start writing stuff down on the on the page. So we can have a bit of a group discussion and create a bit of a Kind of we're going to build on this now and discuss maybe in your context different ways in which you might have done things. So, um, importance of feedback. So, what I had there was to motivate. Okay, so like at, there was a quote by Ken Blanchard that when I googled feedback, it was the first thing that popped up, and he said that feedback is the breakfast of champions. Okay, so like athletes crave it. Like sometimes they want to be told that they're doing things well and they want that positive reassurance. So like what we had up here, um, to encourage it's like to actually, you know to know that you're doing things as well or that you're learning and that you're improving. Um, but it's also to get better. So like, you know, people want to actually improve in their sport most of the time because, you know, they want to succeed and they want to do well. And um, that confidence factor um, to improve, like we said. Um, and one thing that is actually really important that we talked about kind of going back a while ago was this coach-athlete relationship. So like to develop that kind of rapport with your athletes by being able to give feedback in a positive way. Um, and then here are some of the methods there that we had there in verbal, visual, very good, coach to athlete, athlete to athlete. It can be intrinsic, visual with the video, um, and then environmental. So I just touched on the environmental part where it's actually as a coach is creating that environment that it's actually like learning within that environment intrinsically. Um, one thing that we didn't kind of mention yet was positive or negative, okay? So like people don't generally want to hear the word negative because it's, neg it's a negative word. However, what are your views on negative feedback? 
just from your from your kind of experience, like what what would you first of all come to your head if you heard somebody was giving somebody negative feedback? It it, 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 it depends on the individual. Okay. It really can work for some people. Um, you know, I've had the ne negative feedback there. Saturday to uh, a guy saying a girl is is doing what's hard to do, and it's for a man now to do that faster. You know, just challenge the man on. on Boys versus girls type of thing, but it was it was negative. Okay. You know, and it was going too slow. Okay. You know? Anybody else? It's controversial, is it? Maybe? Yeah. Well, it's just yeah. what would you think? Well, I mean, it's nothing now. Got senior ladies football. I'm a captain. It's just doing nothing late, and I'm, I'm telling her it's just doing nothing late. And, but she spoke to set the example on the team. Uh, they need to be they're not they're not um, snowflakes or such. And sometimes they need to be. And do you think, sorry now to cut across you, but do you think negative feedback has to be given negatively? No, no. Like, so this is what we have to think about. Like, you can give somebody negative feedback, but in like a constructive type of manner. It doesn't have to be in a negative tone. If you think back to that coach barking at his player, I'm sure he wasn't telling them what a great job he was doing. It seemed like he was shouting at him because he was doing something wrong or something negatively. However, as a coach, it's actually important to be able to give negative feedback in certain situations. So yes, it depends on the athlete and what we might do. It depends on certain things. So we're actually going to talk about that now. Um, but it's, it's it just I have these arrows here just to represent that they're all interchangeable. So positive feedback in terms of reassurance can be given extrinsically from a coach or a video. It can be intrinsic from yourself, knowing that you've performed a skill well, and vice versa. Um, a study that I looked at or a paper that I read talked about positive and negative feedback and how, you know, who feeds well off of each. So like positively, if I was to have a youth athlete, somebody that's just beginning, you know, is just joining the sport, the majority of your feedback is probably going to be positive. You know, you're going to have to want to keep them coming to play, you know, like you want them to perform that skill well repetitively. However, for the expert, it was proven that it was actually, they responded better to negative feedback or constructive feedback where they were to actually be able to get better and perform well then at the higher end. Whereas there's no point in telling an expert, you know, oh, you're great, like, good job, well done, this and this. They don't want to hear that a lot of the time. You know, like, sometimes they actually want to be told areas that they can improve on. And that just depends on the way in which you're going to give that feedback. So it doesn't have to be associated with the word negative. So that just moves us on to our next slide and our next task. So I'll put up the first one. Um, and a little method in which you might have heard of as a coach is like the sandwich approach. So if you're giving negative feedback or constructive feedback, how you adapt this sandwich approach. Has anybody heard of it? Yeah, yeah. So like you give kind of something positive to warm up the discussion, then you might actually give a piece of feedback that you want to give. So I think maybe you need to do this, maybe a little bit better next time. However, you're doing this really well, good job. You know, so then you finish off with something positive maybe to soften the bit in the middle. So this just goes back to where, you know, how you might actually give that individual such feedback. Because it's quite easy, I'm assuming, to give positive feedback to somebody. You know, like, generally, that's, that's you know, that, that's, as a coach, like, you could do that, okay? Maybe for certain individuals, it's not because they might not want to be that positive all the time. However, negative feedback, that's a tricky one that we're talking about, it's controversial. Um, so again, I want you to just jot down a few things, maybe with a partner, by yourself, and about things to consider. So I'll stick the first one up, I'll give you a freebie, and that's like body language, okay? So things like that, that you might need to consider how to give feedback. Of yourself, or? Or to, as person. a coach, no, to an individual, or to a team, or it could be to yourself, anything, anything that's yeah, related to. If I'm giving feedback to a player, yeah. am I reflecting here on my, yes. myself, yeah, when I'm can. giving him yeah. feedback, or? Yeah. Yeah, you can. What feedback do you use on that player? Wait, uh, just things that you might consider in how you're giving the feedback, okay. Okay. and it can depend on it can depend on the individual, the context.
So I would oppose where it's conjoined. open that up now to like a group discussion um, and feel free to share feel free to share stories about you know situations that you might have found yourself in as a coach because it's good for us to sit here and be able to nearly provide each other feedback without it being quite a formal situation where it's like one-to-one -one, but it's in a group and you can actually learn from this going forward to bring this into your own context so I'll just stick up a few different things there and just pipe in whatever else you might have um, so tone of voice, I think I've seen that written on your um, sheet there, Philip. Um, who, so individualism, we, you know, you look at who you're actually giving the feedback to. So you were saying that in your situation, it worked positively. You responded to when you said, like, you compared him to the girl that was swimming. Um, whether you're actually speaking to a team or you want to have, like, a hot review with the individual. Um, Frequency is an important one, especially for some coaches because some coaches feel the need to talk all the time and give constant feedback. So it's important to realize when you might give feedback, whether it's throughout a game, you know, in a timeout where you're constantly calling somebody over to speak to them in practice. So um, you don't want to uh, like overanalyze things like we talked about that before, the overanalysis part. Um, questioning, so actually getting the athlete to think for themselves depends on the context and to actually reflect on previous situations that you might have encountered with that certain individual or your team and to reflect back and think, okay, well, what worked positively for me as a coach when I gave that piece of feedback? So you know, for example, now with your athlete, he responds to certain ways in which you'll do things and you'll probably adapt that going forward and you know you'll use that again. Whereas you might have had a not so good experience with an individual where they didn't respond to what you were trying to, you know, whatever message you were trying to convey and you might try and be adaptable as a coach in that situation. So um, I just wanna hear from me now, uh, maybe different um, experiences that you might have had in a, as a team or as an individual, um, you know, like uh, when you gave somebody feedback and they did respond or they didn't and how you might have to change things up. Just to make that clear there, situation at times, what I've what I had to do is um, <coughs> change how Just more console them than anything else, and, and to um, to kind of get get them to try and shake it off, to come up with methods to try and um, get them to bring them down emotionally, and, and it's more about the emotional control um, than the actual specific swim. Yeah, I know. Like just for me, even as a coach, you know, I'm a basketball coach, so you have. 12 players, 15 players sometimes on a squad, and like that, it's knowing the individual and knowing who, what they're <coughs> gonna to respond to. So there's there's been many situations that I've been in where I, I can speak to one girl differently, or you know, in one way, and then to someone else. And one thing that kind of interests me is like the gender aspect. Like as a coach, like I don't know, does any of you have both male and female? Do you speak to them differently? Yeah, so like it's different, like I have a boys under 18 team, I have a girls under 18 team, and there's definitely certain things that you might be able to say to some of the boys that you probably couldn't say to some of the girls. You challenge the boys and you love the girls. Mm, okay. You, know, you, have, you have to be far more emotional to the girls, and you definitely can't say the same harshness 
because they hold on to it. Yeah. For much, much longer. Thirty five tends to get off a little bit quicker. Yeah. And you see that even with boys and girls when they're friends with each other, or you know, like the way they say like girls hold which is quite quite thing and stuff like that. I mean it's interesting because like you w you don't want to have this idea in your head that okay I can be harsh to boys or you know like I have to do this like it, it you have to learn as a coach to be able to adapt to certain situations and know your athlete. So again it's that coach athlete relationship and knowing who you're actually dealing with and it's building that rapport so that you're approachable so that they know that they can come to you or you can go to them and then that feedback is kind of received in the right way. Anybody else have anything to share before we move on or Gavin, you like to share uh, yeah, you know, I was super fun with Alex Ferguson the other day. Yeah. He's probably been one of the school but um, he dealt with contact and individuals. Mm -hmm. <coughs> he would never criticize Harry Cantona. He was cut cut on his own biggest yeah. Uh, but sure, Alex Ferguson, they think he gives the hair dryer treatment, yeah, wasn't it, in yeah. the dressing room? But Fergie's, the team knew they were in trouble when they started saying, the difference between Glenn Dagan and between Fergie as well. So if Fergie wanted to get his point across, the team was, wasn't performing, he would sing away at Dixie. Mm -hmm. And the whole team would go, what do you mean, Dixie's still there? We, we better. Does he set the standard or he we, set we, the bar? We better improve yeah. here. Right? It's like what you were talking about with your team captain, you know, yeah. that way. Like, So it's about knowing, mm -hmm. like, that. If you call out that person that you deem your leader or <coughs> who is supposed to kind of set the standard in practice that everybody else will kind of generally follow mm -hmm. and it will be infectious and will kind of spread then throughout the team and then you might get the response that you're kind of looking for like you might elicit that response okay and um, so hopefully this youtube video will work um and just throughout this video okay i want you to think of so watch the video then we'll take a couple of minutes to think about and discuss again with your partner beside you or as a group um, about how you might give feedback in your context and even just share stories amongst yourselves about what worked or I want you to discuss how the coaches in the video were actually giving their athletes feedback and whether you deemed that positive or, or negative or whether it was right or wrong or how you might actually take that forward with you um, to your practice. Yeah, it's up all the way. Should be there. It's so it's so it's longer than the other one. Should be there as well. Yeah. It's not showing it on the other. something that some people spend their whole lives trying to buy. What you achieve is that ever elusive victory within. And Joanna, I am so proud of you. Four months ago when I took the job at Richmond, I had a plan. That plan failed. I came to coach basketball players when you became students. I came to teach boys, and you became men. Okay, so just bear in mind the tone of voice and... Just poke a stick over the ice, he has lost his mind. Jim Playfair is throwing the stick on the ice. Unbelievable. He's throwing his jacket off. Jim Playfair is going nuts on Jamie Koharski right now. And the fans are with them. And he's gonna break a second stick. He's on the top of the bench, and Jim Playfair once again throws another stick up the ice. And now Jimmy Koharski just to outweigh him. Just one more, we're going to look at um, basketball specific, just in a timeout. Only. We're getting 
to think back to the video now and the different situations that you've seen and the different ways in which coaches decided to give athletes feedback. I just want you to take a couple of minutes to kind of reflect on it, to take it in, compare it to your context, different athletes that you might be dealing with, and maybe just have a bit of a discussion there with your partner. I can be jealous of that. I can be a coach to tell them all that. <laughs> Sometimes you'd love to be that <laughs> But that's good though because like everybody experiences that type of frustration as a coach. It's ways in which that you're gonna kind of bottle that inside and then show a different kind of face then to your athlete. And like it's interesting to hear different people's methods and you know what they like how they do it because you find it yourself, you stand there and you'd look you'd love nothing more than to, you know, lose the rag at times. But how how do you how do you stop yourself from doing that? There was a time a couple of years ago now and uh, I was coaching this guy and I absolutely had him sorted. He was just in the best position and uh, he, he always swam against this other guy and this other guy just knew how to beat him all the time. He just played him all sorts of different ways but weren't they in separate heats? So it was grand. So I was like, yeah, here we go. He's going he's to do a really, really good time. And this will set him up and two years time he'll be going to the Olympics and everything everything that I wanted from my for myself as a, to coach someone and, and the whole lot and had an absolute finish out. And he does this time in, in, in the heat and it's shit, right? <coughs> I'm at, he's down in the pool and I'm cursing and I'm like that black back guy, I'm absolutely throwing the head. And it was still a fast time. Okay, but it wasn't what I what I thought he could do. And uh, another coach goes up to me and goes, ah, great job, coach, great job, coach. And I'm like, fuck you and your great job. I absolutely like <laughs> now this guy's a really good friend of mine. I absolutely la laid into him. And uh, so what I did was I sent down my assistant coach first, right, to talk to him, and he was actually quite happy. Okay. You know? And uh, so I then they came down a while ago, oh yeah, and he needs to work on this in the final and and, and he says were you upset at me? I said, no, no, no. He said, I heard you were talking about No, 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 we're talking about it at all. <laughs> but there's times where you really, you just have to, especially when, when we're not in professional sport or whatever, yeah. like, you know, so it's... Uh, yeah, it's important to remember uh, the certain aspects uh, of it, like, you know, that, it's, that it is just... They, we, we, we look at research papers and stuff like that that say oh, the number one reason for athletes to get involved is because of enjoyment and you know like I don't think they want like necessarily to be yeah. you know criticised in such a way um, so just to kind of conclude that on the feedback end of things it's going to be important to consider you know a number of different aspects you know I know for me, recently I listened to a podcast um, by Alan Keane, he's a coach over in Great Britain, and he talked about how he started to record his timeouts and his sessions in practice. Um, so I've actually started to do that to see what way and what my kind of body language is like, or you know, did I speak too much in the timeout, what type of information did I kind of give across, was it effective, then I analysed how they responded out of that timeout in the game, you know, like what was it kind of constructive, was it effective. And then the biggest part of this whole process, in my opinion anyway, is the reflection part. So like it's you as a coach to be able to sit down and take time. And it's only since I've started to do this master's course that I've 
you know, realize how important that is to get the best out of your team and out of your athletes. So it's to actually think about the past experiences of how you've dealt with certain individuals and if it, you know, seemed like it worked or if it didn't and how you might actually improve. I mean, it's important to actually have that internal or intrinsic feedback on yourself as a coach because it's us that are creating such an environment to make sure that the the players or the kids or whoever you're working with, boys, girls, individuals, teams, have that kind of that learning experience that they all kind of crave. So um, just anything else that anybody wanted to add before we finish up or? No, all good, okay. Thanks very much. Hello.